Hello and welcome dear friends at Lit e City, the YouTube channel that provides you best content for exams like NTA Net English and today I am here with you with 25 most important texts from new literatures in English a quick glance at verbs from Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Caribbean, South African, South Asian and covering uh, almost all works including novels, drama, poetry and essays. This video is very important for the coming exam. The first text which we, which we will discuss is An Imaginary Life, first published in 1978 and written by David Meloff. David Meloff is an Australian writer and acclaimed for works like The Great World, Remembering Babylon and also Poetry Collection, Bicycle and Other Poems. This particular novel, An Imaginary Life, tells the story of the Roman poet Ovid during his exile in Thomas and his very complicated relationship with a boy who is living in wildness. The second work which I would like to bring into your focus is The Cinnamon Peeler which is a poem and poetry collection by Michael Odanchi. Michael Odanchi is a Sri Lankan born Canadian poet, novelist and essayist, writer of critically acclaimed books like The Collected Works of Billy the Kid, a poetry collection, The English Patient, a Booker Prize winner novel, later adapted into a movie also. The Cinnamon Peeler is taken from the anthology Secular Love and in the poem the speaker gives a very sensual description of his wife, their courtship using the exotic qualities of cinnamon, especially its potent scent to underscore his love and desire. Odanchi has basically portrayed his relationship with his wife and also uh, his uh, uh, we can say um, another affair with the women. <coughs> Next text, dear friend, is The Pleasures of Exile, first published in 1960, which is by George Lamming, who is a West Indian novelist and essayist, and uh, he writes continuous, continuously about decolonization and reconstruction of identity in Caribbean nations. The Pleasures of Exile is his first work of non-fiction and it was written during his self-imposed exile in Britain and ex uh, explores, like many of his other works, the themes of identity formation. The next work is Half Breed, published in 17, 1973 and written by Maria Campbell, who is a Mattis author, playwright and community worker. Now Mattis is, we can say, indigenous community of Canada and Maria is a staunch advocate of indigenous Canadian arts and politics. Half Breed is an autobiographical novel and it tells the story of a strong-willed woman who defeated poverty, racism, alcohol, drug abuse by the age of 33. It's a, it's a very great read about uh, the indigenous culture and their instinct for survival. Next work is uh, My Place, published in 1987 by Sally Morgan. Sally Morgan is an Australian Aboriginal author. She is known for her truthful depiction of the Aboriginal identity. My Place is a biographical chronology of her own life and reveals her discovery of Aboriginality in her heritage uh, and comparison with, we can say, Western identity. Next work is Agent of Influence, published in 1999 and authored by Ian Adams, who is a very famous and uh, uh, we can say a very path-breaking journalist to hailing from Canada. He has covered war in Southeast Asia and has traveled widely in Africa, Pakistan, Middle East, Central America, Europe and North America and has written political and other issues related with these places. 
This particular novel, Agent of Influence, is based on a real incident about suspicious circumstances surrounded the death of a Canadian di diplomat. At the height of the Cold War in October 1964, John Watkins, who was Canada's former ambassador to Moscow and a close friend of Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson, are kidnapped. The rest of the novel is about the unraveling of the mystery. Next work is Sugar Heaven, first published in 1960 and written by Jean Devaney, who is a New Zealand writer best known for novel Sugar Heaven and The Butcher Shop. It is set in the tropical cane fields of Queensland. Uh, Sugar Heaven tells the story of Dulcie, who is a southerner who comes to be with Hefty, her cane cutter husband, and learns the hard way about class and sexual politics in that particular area. The next work which you must recall is The Good Doctor which was long listed for Man Booker Prize in 2003 and is written by Damon Galgood. Now he is a South African novelist and playwright. It was long listed but in uh, this particular year 2021 his novel The Promise has won the Booker Prize finally. The novel is set in a poor and remote part of South Africa. It is narrated by Frank Aloff, a doctor at a small hospital. He is accustomed to the tedium and he isn't happy on sharing his room with a newcomer doctor, Lawrence Waters, and who is an idealist and he wants to change the perception of this small hospital. The next work is Club Chernobyl, published in 1994 and written by D.N. Warren, who is a Canadian novelist, dramatist and short story writer. Club Chernobyl is set in a nightclub designed to resemble the inside of a damaged nuclear reactor. The eerie environment provides the context and theatrical metaphor for the characters' confrontation with their darkest fears. Our next work, dear friend, is The Drover's Wife, published first quite early in 1892 and written by Henry Lawson, an Australian writer and Bush poet, who along with Benjo Patterson is best known Australian writers of the colonial period. It is The Drover's Wife is a story about a bushwoman who faces off against a snake in order to protect herself and her children. A drover is a person who, who basically carries, um, we can say, a group of animal or herd and drove them to different pastures. Now, alone with her children, she faces of different uh, dangers, ward, of, ward them off and it shows the courage and the spirit of the aboriginal uh, persons. Our next work is A Guest of Honor by Nadine Gardimer, who is a South African writer, Nobel Prize winner, known for her novels like Burgers, Daughter and July's People. It is the story of British civil servant Colonel Bray who leaves his post, who has to leave actually his post because he becomes quite close to the uh, right, uh, opponents or rebel freedom fighters. When uh, South Africa gains independence, Bray is invited back by the new president who is a close friend to him and he wants to report on how to improve the system of education. Our next work is Crick Crack Monkey, first published in 1970 and written by Merle Hodge, who is a Trinidadian novelist acknowledged as the first black Caribbean woman to have published a major work of fiction. It is the story of a young Afro-Caribbean girl, T, who is faced with an identity crisis because she is forced to experience two different cultures. She is born and brought up with her sister and brother in Trinidad, living with her aunt Tanti. But then, after his father migrates to England, she has to shift with a um, rather anglicized existence with her aunt Beatrice. And a lot of confusion because of this particular uh, shift uh, in cultural value causes her to be in confusion. Our next work is A Fringe of Leaves by 
Patrick White, the most famous Australian writer, winner of the Nobel Prize, authored works like The Tree of Man, Was, Riders in the Chariot, The Solid Mandala. All these are uh, very popular works of Australian writer. Fringe of Leaves is the first work uh, he published after receiving the Nobel Prize. It is a story of Ellen Roxburg, who with her invalid husband Austin returns on a ship to England after a visit to Austin's brother Garnet in Australia. The ship is wrecked and the people have to maroon, uh, are marooned on uh, an island where they are attacked by the local people. Uh, many among dies and Ellen is a lone survival. Uh, though this title, The Fringe of Leaves, actually uh, refers that how she is stripped of her clothes and she has to wear these fringe of leaves to keep her modesty intact. Next work is Obasan, published in 1981 by Joy Kogawa, who is a Japanese-born Canadian poet and novelist and noted for his works Obasan, East of the Rockies, The Rain Ascends. It is based on author's own experiences. It was first novel to tell the story of evacuation, relocation and dispersal of Canadian citizens of Japanese ancestry during the Second World War. The next work is Beautiful Losers, published in 1966 by Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen was a renowned Canadian singer, songwriter, poet and novelist. In fact, after publishing two novels, he basically turned his attention towards songwriting and become one of Canadian's um, most popular songwriter and performer. It is one of the best known experimental novels of 60s. It is a story of two men and a woman in a love triangle. They are united by their obsession with the 17th century Mohawk Saint Catherine Tekak Vida. Actually, the novel has a very popular opening line. Who are you? Catherine Tekak Vida and Leonard present a non-linear, non-conclusive narrative with lots of, uh, we can say, twist, interior monologue and other postmodern experiments. This Walker and the Ghost Dance, first published in 1992, is a play opera by Derek Walcott, once again West Indian poet from St. Lucia, playwright, winner of Nobel Prize, noted for works that explore the Caribbean cultural experience, especially known for his epic poem Amaris. This particular uh, play is set at Dakota Plains near Walker River and it is based on the ghost dance movement which was a manifestation of the Native Americans fear, anger, hope regarding the onslaught of white invaders. The next work is Small Island, first published in 2004 and written by Andrea Levy who is a British author of Jamaican descent descent and is best known for the novels Small Island and The Long Song. It is the story of post-war Caribbean migration through four narrators, Hortense and Gilbert, who have migrated from Jamaica to London in 1948, and an English couple, Queenie and Bernard, in whose house in London they find lodgings. Then uh, there are some other works which you must Keep in mind at least the name and the titles, Chinua Achibi, the famous Nigerian writer, his work no longer at ease. Peter Carey from Australia, he has also written very important works, Oscar and Lucinda. Then we have Jack Davis, once again Australian, Australian writer, No Sugar. Donald Woods, he is basically a journalist and Cry Freedom is the name of movie made by David Attenborough about his contribution in the apartheid movement. Indira Goswami hails from India, the SME's writer, winner of Saitya Akademi Award, The Moth Eaten Hoda of a Tusker. Uh, the, um, most of her works deal with the problem of widowhood and Indian perception. 
Other works include Megan Morris, a famous cultural critic, and her essay on the beach in collection Too Soon, Too Late, History in Popular Culture. Then we have the Canadian Margaret Atwood, Nature as Monster in her Survival, Barbara Jaffers, once again a black woman writing uh, in, in English about her identity, her first novel Contango Day, and C. L. R. James, one of the most important post-colonial Caribbean voice who has written Beyond a Boundary, which is basically a book on cricket commentary. Okay, dear friends, these were some works which you must go through even before, even today before the exam and try to uh, remember these names, works, their significance because they are the emerging trends in literature. Keep supporting the channel and best of luck for your exam. Thank you, friends.